Hope everyone's doing well this morning. Today's Thursday, December 16th. Today's session, we are going to review some of the grammar items. It's going to be very similar to what we did yesterday. We'll spend the first hour looking at some grammar items from the, the TOEFL practice that you had yesterday. Try to clarify some doubts. And we'll spend the second hour from 11 to 12 with two additional grammar reviews, okay, from the TOEFL exam. So I'll let you know right now, here are the links for today's grammar review. Grammar review number three and grammar review number four. Again, we'll start these two grammar reviews at 11 o'clock, okay? But uh, this is where you can find those links. Also, yesterday I uploaded the results. If you're interested to see as a group how, how you all did, you can open up these PDF files, okay? And this these are the PDF files, these are the reports that I'm looking at to determine which of the grammar items we can look at today. It was obvious that the second review, all of you as a group did better, I think, than, than the first, okay? Now that's for whatever reason, um, but most of the items that I wanna look at are coming from the first exam, first review, number five here, actually. Okay. Now, if I'm going to try to get through as many of these as possible, but if there's one grammar item that you want me to look at that we're not going to talk about, of course, let me know. Okay. Jump in, turn your mic on, and we can look at it. My, my uh, thinking here is to focus on the items that have a fairly low percentage, okay? So here in the report, you can see as a percentage, as a whole group, the percentage correct. So if we're getting 80% as a group, 100%, everyone got this one right, okay? That's pretty good as a, as a group, okay? So again, I'm gonna focus on some of the items with a lower percentage. But again, if there's a particular item that you want or need for me to explain, let me know. We'll try to get to it. If not, just post your question in the chat and uh, I can get to it later and either create a video or if we have time tomorrow, we can talk about it. Okay. So hopefully all of you were able to get your results from yesterday's TOEFL exam and hopefully all of you were able to see which of the items you got correct and which of the items you got incorrect. All right, so, and for some reason, if you don't have that information, send me a chat and I'll send you the report. Okay, I'll send you the PDF uh, report. All right, my friends, let's get this party started. Let's take a look at, I really wanted to start with item number 32 because I believe this was, if I'm not mistaken, this was the item with the lowest percentage. Correct. This one right here. Number 32. Now let's go into teams. We're going to go into our notebook. This item, number 32. All right, here's the original item here. At no time a student's cheating on a final e examination can be condoned. So this error, this type of mistake, it's a little tricky because the problem here is with word order. Okay, this is the, a problem with subject verb agreement, but specifically word order. And so I listed here some examples as kind of a point of comparison, okay, or even different ways of saying the same thing. So the problem here with this uh, statement, okay, the problem here is with the verb or the auxiliary can or the modal can and the word order, the placement. 
So here we could say at no time can a student's cheating be condoned. Okay, this would be the correct way of saying this. So again, the, the problem here simply can needs to be before the subject. The subject here is cheating or the subject here is a student, a student's cheating. Okay, this is the subject and the verb phrase, right, is can be or can be condoned. This is kind of in the passive voice, right? So this is the problem with this statement. Now, here's another way of saying the same thing, just again, as a point of comparison. You can say, you can change the word order again and say a student's cheating at no time can be condoned or a student's cheating at no time never can be condoned. All right, so maybe we're more used to seeing this word order, but this is also very acceptable. And we would use this word order if we want to stress what? At no time. We would actually begin the sentence if we really want to st stress at no time can a student's cheating be condoned. It's, it's more emphatic. It's more stressed. It's like saying, hey, this is really serious. At no time, never can a student's cheating be condoned. And this would be the use case. This would be the situation where you will see this, where in this case, the prepositional phrase at no time is being stressed. It's being brought up here at the beginning of the statement. All right, so this one is a little tricky if you're not familiar with this word order. And as a point of comparison, I, I brought in another example. Never are you allowed to go to bars. Okay, so imagine your parents telling you, never are you allowed to go to bars. You, they might say, you are never allowed to go to bars. Okay, that's also probably uh, the word order that maybe you're more used to, may, perhaps, okay? But you could also say never, if your parents are really emphatic and they just wanna say, no, 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 never are you allowed to go to bars, okay? Well, this is also, this is also a way of stressing that idea. All right, so compare, in this case, the adverb, right, never, notice where the placement is, okay? In this example, subject first, and we have here are allowed, so we have the verb are, and then we have the adverb, and we have the adjective, and then to go, infinitive, two bars, the prepositional phrase. Here we have the adverb, and then we have are you, never are you, so verb, and then the subject, okay? So pay close attention here to, to these examples. These are very similar in structure, okay? These two examples are very similar in structure. When we want to stress, in this case, this adverb, this adverb or this stress, stressing the word never or at no time, all right, guys, hopefully that helps clarify. Do you guys have questions about this one? This was a little tricky. I think this gave us, well, there was another one too, but we had a couple of, of items that gave us as a group some struggles, okay? So are we, are we okay with this one? Yes, thank you, teacher. All right, so let's go to the next one here. I've got in my notes, gram, let's see, number 20, make sure I'm the right one, 21. And let me copy this over, is that right? Yes. Okay, this was a little bit difficult. So let me bring this over here, this is, You write down just to keep all the straight review number one. And this is 
item number 21. Okay, let's look at it again. The group of spectators was dispersed by the police who was at the scene of the accident within minutes. All right, so some of you thought it was option within minutes. Some of you selected by. Some of you selected who was. So what's incorrect? Well, we know who was, but what is incorrect or how could we fix this particular example? What's the uh, what's the problem? How would you describe this problem? How would you describe fixing the problem? Imagine you're English teachers and you're correcting one of your English language learners. How would you explain this example? How would you correct it? That instead of was is where. All right. Now, can you? That's correct. Now, can you say any more about that in terms of grammatical structures? What's going on here grammatically? Does well, anyone because ha it's, um, they are saying uh, the group of spectators. So that's plural because a group, of course, it's plural, but the spectators one, because it has an S at the, at the end of the of the word, it makes it in plural. So it's talking about a lot of spectators. It's not saying that it's just one. All right. Does anyone agree or disagree with that statement? Or does ha does anyone else have anything else to add? Um, yes, I think the, the verb refers to the word police. Uh, I think that's uh, like a non-countable noun or plural <clears throat> and right. i think you would need um to change the verb as uh, my classmate said but because it refers to police i think all right so what what would you call this who was or were at the scene of the accident within minutes what kind of grammatical structure have I highlighted here in, in yellow? Adjective plus. All right. And we have another name for that. Do you remember the other name that we also use for adjective clauses? That's right. So here we have an example of a relative clause. And yes, they are adjective clauses. And a relative clause usually begins with what kind of word? What begins a relative clause or what begins, what's the first word? that begins an adjective clause. What do we, we have a special name for that word as well. What part of speech is this first word that begins this relative clause? Any ideas? A uh, uh, relative pronoun. That's right. A relative pronoun. The first word of a relative clause is a relative pronoun. Now, in this example, who is our relative pronoun. Who is our relative pronoun? We know pronouns substitute 
right? It's a substitute for some other noun. So in this case, who, who is who? <laughs> who does who refer to? What's the antecedent? What do you think? Police. That's right, police. Now, this is where we need to be careful. Like when we see this, this text that comes before the relative pronoun, we do need to ask ourselves, who is who, right? Or who, what does what, because remember relative pronouns, it could be who, it could be which, it could be that. Those are our common relative pronouns. We need to ask ourselves, what is the noun that that pronoun is, is uh, substituting? What is the antecedent to that pronoun? Now, in this case, right, I think police, we could substitute police here and say, the police were at the scene of the accident within minutes. If we ask ourselves, okay, could I say this, spectators were at the scene within minutes. Mm, pr probably not. Like when I read this statement, I feel like the group of spectators were there first or right away or immediately, right? Or maybe they were, they actually were there. Maybe it was an accident, but then the police came later, right? Now, this is important because we need to know what the word the noun is in this case police so substitute it just just make it do a mental exercise and say to yourself okay is it police was at the scene or police were at the scene now the question is is the word police singular or plural if it's plural which i think you mentioned it was what's the singular equivalent how would we say that person in the singular. If police is plural, what's the singular equivalent? Any ideas? The singular for police? You no, know, because it's it's uh, a noun because it describes like the collection of police officers, but you can say like policemen or something like that. Yeah, you can say police. You could say police officer or police. Police officer probably. Uh, It's probably the 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 better way of saying it, right? Sometimes we say policeman or policeman or policewoman, but police officer probably is going to be your best option. People also is sometimes confused, right? We sometimes we have problems with singular and plural with people. People's plural, person is singular. Okay. So in, in this example, you could say if this were singular, you could say by the police officer who was at the scene of the accident within minutes. And then the verb is okay, right? Just changing this a little bit from this plural to the singular. So yes, it's kind of, it's a collective noun police, but the police were, this is uh, what we need to, to think about. Okay. So subject verb agreement. Relative clauses, finding the antecedent, those are the key items here for this particular grammar uh, item. Okay, I'm going to go into the next one. If you guys have questions, just jump right in, right? If you, if you want me to, if you need further exp explanation on something, just, just jump right in. Let's look at this one. 
is number 25. The appropriate action to take could not be decided on by either the president nor the vice president. What do you think? Some of you answered on by, some of you answered one person answered to take, some of six answered nor, like the problem with nor. Now it looks here, this is the correct answer, nor. So what's wrong with nor? And how do we fix it? Any, any ideas? I think it should be or because they are using a correlative conjunction that consists of two words that are either and or. That's right. So here is our clue. We see either here. So if we have either, then we know we, we need or. So we have either or or neither nor. Okay, correlative conjunctions. Okay, either or, neither nor. This is our clue here, right? This is what helps us figure this out. If we see either, either this or that, neither this nor that. That's they're, they go to they go hand in hand. They're they're a pair. Okay, so that's that was the uh, way to fix that particular grammar structure. Take a look at this one. This one, what number is it? 27. All right, let's take a look at this one. Answers here were kind of all over the place. Jack London's tour of South Pacific was delayed by his illness in the San Francisco earthquake of 1906. So we know the correct answer, or the correct answer, which is incorrect in this statement, is of South Pacific. Of South Pacific. What's wrong? What? How do we fix it? What do you think? What are they testing for? What grammatical structure are they looking to see if you understand in this example? Any ideas? Some of you got it right. What do you think? How do we fix of South Pacific? If this is incorrect, what's what's missing? What's incorrect? What do we need? How do we fix it? Maybe in 
instead of of, it could be in. Actually, the the preposition of there is really no problem with the preposition. There's something. There's something between the preposition and the word south that we're missing. What word are we missing between the preposition of and the word south? Maybe of the South Pacific. I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? The? That's right, we're missing the article. The South Pacific. Think of it like when you say the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean, right? We would use the, the article. Okay, we'd use the definite article, the Pacific o Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. So of the Pacific, we're missing the article. So they're testing articles, okay, articles. In this case, it's, it's, uh, it's been omitted and we need to add it. Okay, let's look at another item here, number 29. All right, let's look at this. Again, some of the answers, looks like everybody, at least one person answered all the different options here. The correct answer, will inhabit. By the year 2010, the earth will inhabit twice as many people as it is today. So we know the incorrect answer is will inhabit. Okay, this is what we need to change. What do you think? Um, could it be the earth will be? All right, we're on that we're on the right track. The earth will be what else? Inhabitated. That's right. And we need one more word before the word twice. As twice as? Mm. Can you think of another option? Will be inhabited. Need another preposition, a different preposition. Can you think of another one? By the year 2010, the earth will be inhabited. This one's kind of a hard one. 
What what other preposition might we use? The earth will be inhabited blank twice as many people as it is today. No? Maybe by? That's right. That's right. This is the verb here. Now, what, what are they changing? What kind of grammatical structure is being tested here? What's the difference between will inhabit and will be inhabited by? What's the difference? Passive voice. That's right. Active and passive voice. Which one's the active voice? Which one's the passive voice? Active voice is will have it and passive will be. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Passive voice will be will be inhabited by like all of that, right? Will be inhabited. All of that's going to be the verb phrase that will be the the passive voice. Remember that the passive voice always has some form of the word uh, of the verb to be. Okay, so this is remember that the passive voice is in all tenses. Okay, the passive voice applies to all the verb tenses. Now some verb tenses are more common than others. But you can change the active voice to the passive or passive to the active in all of the different 12 verb tenses. Okay, in this case, we're looking at the future. Yeah, that's a little, that one's a little tricky. Look at the next one. Okay, this one was also a little problematic. This is number 34. Yeah, let's take a look. Look at the answers. Look at the correct answer. In this case, physics is the incorrect, is incorrect in this sentence, the word physics. So let's highlight this here. Take a look now. Read the sentence again. Now that we know which word is incorrect, how do we fix it? And how would we explain it? What are we being tested on here in this example? What do you think? How should we or how could we correct this? The word physics. Maybe we can say physical. That's right. Now, what are we being tested on here? What's What's going on? Look at the incorrect answer that was provided. How do we fix it? What is what's being tested here? What part of speech is physics? Which part of speech is physical?
What part of speech is physics? A noun. Okay, and what part of speech is physical? An adjective. Okay. Now, in this case, we know sometimes nouns can function as adjectives, but in this case, what's the meaning of the word physics? What do you think? This is like a uh, uh, science, uh, a subject can be like uh, exactly. the science. Mm -hmm. physics. That's right. It's an area of science or it could be a subject, right? If did you take physics in high school or did you take physics in college? Did you major in physics? Right? So it, it actually has a slightly different meaning in this particular case. It's not really, we wouldn't say physics labor right? A labor that's related to physics, I would probably say it in a different way, right? So here we also have kind of a different meaning, although it looks very, it's, it's, it's very similar in the way that, you know, the word itself goes, right? But here we have physical, physical labor. We could also look at this by saying hard labor, hard physical labor, okay? But labor is our, our noun, right? This is a prepositional phrase and labor is our object of the preposition. And hard, the word hard and the word physics or physical I should say are adjectives modifying the noun labor. Okay. So here what they're testing word families. Okay. You'll see this a lot as you know, right? Are you using the correct form of the word? Is it, should it be a noun? Should it be an adjective? Should it be an adverb? Right? And they're testing your ability to see if you're able to distinguish how's the word functioning in the sentence and are you using the correct part of speech? All right, let's move right along here. I've got a couple of more. Number 10, this is from our second review, number six. This is the second one. And let's see, number 10 gave us a little bit of problems. So let's highlight this bad boy. Let's bring it over to our notes. This is going to be review number two from yesterday. And this is item number 10. So let's take a look. Look at the distractors. Look at the correct answer. Look at the type of sentence it is. What do you see? What do you notice? How can we correct it? Okay, so here we have, right, so what do you think? In this case, right, we need the actual correct, sorry, we need the correct answer. And here we have, should it rain? All right, so it should rain now. Many of you selected this as being the correct answer. Should it, it should rain now, it should rain now. Okay, so this structure, should it, let's just put that here. Should it, and let's highlight that. What kind of sentence do we have here? And and think of an, maybe even another way of of saying this, but what kind of sentence do we have?
Any ideas? Is there another way to say the same thing here by changing this first? This uh, dependent, this is a dependent clause. I have trouble with that, but I don't know if it will be correct to say she'll lead rain now. But I don't know because I don't quite understand why is it correct to say shall shall eat rain now. All right, is there something that like forget about should it? Is there something else that we could say to begin this sentence that really is saying the same thing? It means the same thing. And and this is what you're going to be more familiar with, I think, um, in this example. Notice here we have the main clause here in the future tense, right? And in this case, we have a verb in the present tense. Now here we have a modal should, right? But we have another way of forming this. And it relates to conditionals. So if you had to choose one of these conditionals, the zero conditional, the first conditional, the second and third, those of you who have studied conditionals, which conditional do you think we're dealing with in this example? The first conditional? The first conditional. Now, this is what's difficult about the, the conditionals or the verb tenses and which verb tense goes in which clause. We know that conditionals have two clauses. It has a main clause, right? Or it has a, a, an independent clause and it has a dependent clause. Okay, or it has a main clause and a subordinating clause. So we need to figure out which is which, which is the main clause, which is the subordinating clause, number one, and then number two, which verb phrase needs to go in each of those phrases. And that's what's difficult about the conditionals. Now, this website that I'm sharing here with you guys, you can find this link under conditionals in our page, okay? And I like this page because it really cuts to the chase. It, gets, it shows you very briefly, very directly, examples of which, which verbs go in, in which. Now, in the first conditional, if something in the present, simple present, then we have a verb in the next clause that goes, that's in the future. This is going to be our subordinating clause in the present tense. This is going to be the future tense. This is going to be our main clause. Now, in this case, I could easily say if it rains, if it rains, let's just type this down here. If it rains, now I can say now, I don't really need to say now, but okay, we can say it if we want to. The farmers will have to postpone the harvest, right? If it rains, right, the farmers will have to postpone the harvest. Now, we might recognize this more. Maybe this is more common, uh, more common structure or an example of the first conditional that you perhaps are more familiar with. But this construction is also possible, and it means basically the same thing, right? The meaning is the same. Should it rain, should, should it rain now, the farmers will have to postpone the, the harvest. Okay, this is a conditional. It's still a conditional. They're both examples of conditionals. They're both examples of the first conditional. But here, should it rain, this is typically a more formal construction. All right, if you wanted to ask yourself, well, when should I use should it rain now or when would I use the, the other if it rains now, okay? Typically, this example here is is more formal. Should it rain? Should you go to the school today? You might see so and so. Just a formal construction. So we have should, the modal should, 
it, it's our, our subject, rain, sin ese, right? Because we have the modal, that's our rule. In this case, if is a subordinating conjunction. It's, it's, a different, uh, it's a different grammatical structure. So we have if subordinating conjunction, we have our subject, we have our pronoun, and then rains, we need S here, right? Because it's third person singular. If it rains, the farmers will have to postpone the harvest. Should it rain? Should it rain today? Should it rain now? The farmers will have to postpone the harvest, okay? Basically, they're both conditionals. This one is tricky. All right, guys, hope that helps. I think it's worth your time to take a look at these conditionals. You'll probably have at least one example of conditionals, and probably they're going to look for the verb tenses. That's really the most common. This one's a little bit different, again, uh, because it's a formal construction where we start with the modal. Okie dokie. All right, my friends, look at number 32. Okay, now this one we're looking for the mistake. Number 32. This is review number two. Number 32. And what's incorrect? The word treat. Again, we had various... Responses to this question. Take a look. Okay, guys, this one, actually, there's a mistake. And let me, that's why, yeah, there was a mistake on this one. So let me write out how it should have read. Let me make sure here. Yeah, sorry about that. that. That's a mistake on my part. Here we have using herbal medicines. This is how it should read. Treat doctors more illness for less cost. And this is what's underlined. Of using, we have treat doctors, and we have illness, and less cost. Okay, all right. So that was my mistake. the The mistake in this example is treat doctors. Now it's probably a little easier to figure out how would we correct, or what's the problem here, and how would we correct it using herbal medicines. What do you think? Uh, 
How would we correct uh, this example? Okay, this is our mistake. How? Uh, what's the mistake and how can we correct it? Any ideas? We should change the order of the words. That's instead right. Of, and, instead of trick doctors, we have to say doctors treat. That's right. So we would simply just move the subject in front of the verb. Doctors treat. Simple word order. Word order. Okay. Yeah, that was impossible to get with because of the mistake in the item. Okay, so, all right. Those are the ones that I came across. Are there any other items from either the first or second review that we did yesterday that you want to see, that you want to ask about? We've got about eight minutes, seven, eight minutes. Anyone want to look at a, a specific item? I can choose one more if you want. <clears throat> this is a good one here. 40% got it correct. Take a look at this one. Number 20. And this is uh, an important structure that, that you need to be aware of. So let's, this is second review. What number? I think 20. What's incorrect? Headed. Okay, this is the incorrect. So what's, how do we fix it? How do we correct it? And what is the type of grammatical structure that they're testing here? What do you think? It should be head. Okay, why? Because it's talking in, in present. Well, it's saying like the action is happening in present in the situation too. All right. Yes. Anyone else have anything else to add to that? And, and also, what other part of the sentence helps you with this, helps you with this idea that Gloria said? Because it says leave instead of left. That's right. This is very important. Think of it like this. You have the librarian requested those reading to leave. The librarian requested those reading to head. To head for the next exit. To leave, to head. Now, in this case, we're not. they're not repeating the word to, although they could, it's not necessary. But as you are looking at this, this is called parallelism, a parallel structure. This is what they're testing, that you're being consistent to leave here in this case, the infinitive, and that you have an infinitive here. Okay, again, you could say to head or simply head. 
gets a reading to leave their books and head for the nearest exit, that's fine. Or you could say reading to leave their books and to head for the next exit. They're both correct. Okay, this is a parallel structure, parallelism. All right. Well, we've got a few more minutes. Anyone have any questions? Anyone want me to either review something we've already talked about or look at something we haven't checked out in one of our grammar items? Any questions, my friends? All right, I'll take that silence it's that there are no more questions at this time. If you want to go ahead and pull up, if you haven't already, go ahead and pull up the first review. Okay, it should be accessible here in about three minutes, two and a half minutes. This is the TOEFL gra uh, grammar review number three. Okay, this is what will start at 11. Please try to complete it by 11.30 or before. Okay, try to submit your responses before 11.30. At 11.30, the second review will be available. And once you've completed, I'll do what we did yesterday and upload the results here to this page. All right, guys. All right, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. If you guys have any questions or problems accessing the form, let me know. I'll, I'm going to stick around here checking the chat. And uh, if you have any questions, okay? And then we will reconvene at 12 o'clock just to briefly close the class with uh, some final remarks. All right, guys? Thank you. Yes, teacher. Listen to a con. There's something that's been mindlessly f restaurants, books. It's just so hard to think about all of those practical things and make good work. Why does. Listen to part of So that was a real surprise to all of us. Is the lecture main? Listen to part of a shift of power from southern to northern Europe continued. Listen again to part of the lecture. Listen to a call. I can't read it on my own time. You know, I think I'll give it a try. Why does... Time. You know, I think I'll give it a try. Listen to part part of a lecture. In 
It's a very minimal quantity. It's a very minimal quantity. Listen to prove this really hasn't been done yet. What is the Okay, everyone, it is 12 o'clock. I think we'll go ahead and close for today. Tomorrow will be our last session for the week. Uh, the plans are to begin at 10 o'clock in the morning. From 10 to 12, we'll have our last listening comprehension practice with TOEFL. I've uploaded the audios if you want to listen to the audio recording before. If you think you get more out of uh, these TOEFL listening practice by listening to the audio first and then answering the questions, uh, then I encourage you to do so. If you're going to listen to the audios, as I've mentioned before, I would take notes. I would listen to it however many times you need to, to try to understand as much from the audio as possible. Maybe writing out key words, maybe writing out phrasal verbs or idiomatic expressions or technical terms. And of course, look them up in the dictionary. If all of this helps with your, your comprehension of the audio, I encourage you to do this. Do that. This might be more appropriate for those of you who are at a lower level or that your scores tend to be on the low side. If you're further advanced, then I'd actually recommend not listening to the audio and just again, get the additional practice listening to the audios for the first time and trying to answer the questions, but it's up to you. But if you are going to listen to the audios, I would suggest that you actively listen to the audios. That, that is, you're taking notes, you're playing it back, you're pausing it, how, whatever you need to do to uh, understand as much uh, from the audio as possible. So tomorrow the plan is to spend from 10 o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock in the morning with the listening comprehension. And then we'll have uh, from 11 to 12, I want to give you another opportunity to uh, answer some additional grammatical uh, structures. Now, what I would suggest to do, and momentarily here in a few minutes, I'm going to upload the results from the, uh, from the second review that you just took. If you want to find your group results from the first grammar review from today, you can find it here. You can find the questions that are more difficult. And I would suggest going and checking the items that are more difficult, seeing what you can do on your own. And I encourage you to ask questions if you want me to review any of these items. If you have Let's say an item that you're looking at and you don't know how to fix it. You're not sure why it's correct. These are some questions that I would post in Microsoft Teams. I would post it publicly, in fact, here in this section. And I'll try to respond if you have, uh, if you have questions. All right, so tomorrow, that's the plan. From 10 to 11, we'll do the audio portion of the TOEFL and from 11 to 12, we'll do the, the grammatical structure section of the TOEFL. Finally, I uploaded an invitation to the MEX-TESOL Regional Convention 
scheduled for January 15th and the 16th. I encourage all, everyone to go if you are available and uh, you want to uh, attend, I encourage you to do so. I included the link here to the Facebook page. You can get more information about the conference uh, by accessing this link. All right, guys, I think we'll stop there for today. And um, tomorrow, again, will be our last day for this 10-hour uh, course uh, offering uh, for uh, TOEFL practice. And that's how we'll conclude for this week. All right, guys, have a great day today, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks, teacher. Thank you, Bye. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Bye.